letting y'all get on here. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing wonderful. Hope you're having an awesome time. How y'all doing out there? Wait till it says some people are on here. Hey, hey there. I see Dale. Hi, Dale. Who all's out there today? Tracy, hey Tracy. I hope you're having an awesome day. Really, I do. Sheila, hey Sheila. Oh, I love Sheila. Hey John. Hey Tracy. Mwah. Y'all are awesome. O'Neill, hey darling. I'm gonna let the numbers build for a short minute before I get started with the testimony. Hey Mark. Uh, God, I really feel like he's told me to address abuse and abuses. He's been telling me for this for the last couple of months, and now I feel like he says for the next month, that's one of the things I'm going to be hitting very heavy and hard, is abuse. Oh, O'Neill, thank you, darling. Thank you, I received that. I am a pretty lady in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Cheryl. Y'all need to follow Cheryl. She's got an awesome ministry on there. Um, she does these awesome videos. You know, she's a woman. She's she's written some books. Hey, Carmela. She's, um, you know, she sings. It's like she just does all kinds of awesomeness, you know, in Jesus. It's just wonderful. Oh, you survived the hurricane. Praise God, Brigetta. Good. Yes, so did I. So did I. I only had one limb down in the yard. When I spoke to the wind, I literally, hey Carmela, I literally commanded angels to pull anything demonic out of that wind and to pull it down. <laughs> and immediately, you know, bam, the winds ceased. Um, and so that's what it is to reign and to rule, to rock your world for Jesus and do what God is asking you to do. But I want to talk to you today about a particular over the next month, I'm going to be doing um, abuse video testimonies. And these abuse video, uh, these testimonies are going to be from my own life. They're going to incorporate maybe one scripture, maybe two, um, or mentioning of a scripture. Like today is going to be Ephesians chapter 5, all about, uh, you know, wives submitting to their husbands, husbands being willing to die for the wife, just like Christ died for the church. That's the key right there. That's the key right there, okay? Um, and there's so much abuse that has been rampant, especially in the body of Christ in the church. Come on, this religion, uh, Jezebel, uh, Leviathan, all these different things that are going on. And many of you are either currently going through abuse or you've come out of it. All of us in some shape, form, or fashion because we had dysfunctional families, nobody's family was perfect, come on. You at some point have been in abuse. It might have been bullying at school. It could have been from your spouse. But today I want to talk about spouse abuse and church attendance. So we're going to also talk about Smith Wigglesworth. There was an incident with his, uh, he and his wife. He had backslidden and, um, you know, he locked her out on the porch because she decided to go to church. You know what I'm saying? There's been other people to do things like that too. But at any rate, he ended up repenting at the end of that. Come on, he ended up repenting um, and getting right with God. Now, in my situation and scenario, and maybe some of you on here, your husband didn't repent, okay? Well, this is what happened. How do you submit? Like, you know, he, he told his wife she couldn't go to church. You know, he didn't like her going. Okay, so what did she do? Did, was she being rebellious? She decided to go to church. Then he locked her out of the house. Some might say, well, that serves her right. You know, that kind of thing. Well, let's go off into what happened in my life, my situation. Okay? Um, I know, like, I was serving in ministry. And so, I had to be there every Sunday. He was always there every time the church door was open. We were always there. Well, that day, he decided to get to what? To uh, be upset. He just, just got mad, and I can't remember why I got mad. Um, maybe one of the kids did something he didn't like. Maybe I had, uh, you know, done something. I'm thinking, like, what? Something that he would have thought was, you know, made him mad or something. Maybe, um, 
I'm trying to think of a scenario. Maybe I got in the shower before he did. Maybe I was brushing my teeth and wasn't grabbing his breakfast fast enough. I don't know. Because, you know, with people who are abusive, what was it that morning? I don't know, but I do remember he got mad and angry. And I know he went outside and I thought, well, he's just doing something to either check the vehicle, prep the vehicle, or forgot something he needed, who knows what. So I wasn't paying too much of attention. Um, but I get out there to the van because he's now angry and he decides, he just says, he's not going and I can't go either. And I said, well, I'm going to go. You know, I, people are expecting me. Church service. Okay, this is because I was in leadership. Church didn't start till I got there. Come on, you don't be late. Otherwise, you got to call and say, we're not coming. Does that make sense? They're waiting on you to start church. You're supposed to be there at a decent time. And so I'm like, okay. So I get myself and the kids in the van. And this was a 12-passenger van. And I crank it, nothing happens. You know, I turn it over. I mean, I don't think there was any kind of a noise. Nothing, nothingness. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't have time for this. He's angry. I can't imagine getting him out here to help me fix the vehicle in the mood that he's in. That's what I'm thinking. He's passed on now, okay? He's passed on now. Um, but it was 15 years of marital abuse. And some people might look at that and go, well, if he didn't want you to go, weren't you supposed to stay home? Come on now. Are you going to, what are you going to listen to when somebody tells you you can't be around Christian people? You can't this, you can't that. I'm just saying. So I had obligations to fulfill. He was doing it out of anger and an ugly spirit, not because he prayed and decided that wasn't the right church for us and we were going to go do something else. Okay, there's, do you understand what I'm saying? You submit to godly leadership. You don't submit to ungodly people if it's going to bring harm. Okay? And so, I'm in the van, and it doesn't do anything. So, I get the kids out, and I'm thinking I even had the baby out of the car seat. But anyway, we got everybody out, threw hands on the, you know, the hood of the, this tall, big, 12-passenger van. We pray, and I remember part of the prayer was, I don't know what it is, I don't care what it is. Um, even if it needs a new part or something, I command angels to do that now in Jesus' name. Give us a new part if necessary. You know, whatever it is we need. I get back into the van. Okay. We've prayed. The kids said amen. We all jumped back in there. And um, one of my sons is sitting up in the front seat. Because, you know, I usually would sit over there and his dad was driving. But since I was driving, he was up in the front seat. And the little ones were all in their car seats behind us and strapped up and stuff. So I put the key in and it cranks like lightning. Within a second and a half or two of me cranking that vehicle, out shoots their father. And he's like, uh, pop the hood pop the hood and I pop the hood he lifts it up he looks I can tell because in a 12 passenger van you actually it's got a bigger gap than a regular van like across the front of it because it's a really big hood somehow it's just really bigger and I, I could see him and his expression he looked at the picnic table over beside the van okay and then he goes ah! and he slams the hood of the van back down and storms off inside and I'm like and I look at the picnic table and I see something over there on it but I'm not thinking too much you know I'm just glancing or whatever and I told my son I said do you have any idea why he's acting like that he says yeah probably because uh, that thing he threw over there on the picnic table and I look and that's when I began to focus in on the object because you know like when I noticed him you know you see somebody look in a direction you look but you know I'm not paying too much attention it's just there in your vision you know, you know, I'm not focused on it. I'm just realizing it's a picnic table and there's stuff there on it. I probably had leaves and different things on it, you know, unless we'd eaten on it recently. But when he told me that, I looked over there and I was like, oh my gosh. Because I know what a distributor cap looks like. I've seen them before. It had a, a, a big center section and then out from it, it looked like it had finger type things that came out from it. Um, and I guess those fit on your something. Maybe it's your spark plugs or whatever. It fits onto something. And somehow, without that, your vehicle can't run. I'm not an auto mechanic. I'm putting this into layman's terms. So an auto mechanic's probably going, <laughs> or people that know about vehicles. I'm just saying, that's the part he ripped off. We prayed for the vehicle. He made me pop the hood once it cranked. Growled, basically, and threw the hood down and stormed off inside the house. So I put it in reverse. We get down, you know, and get, we're driving off. We get to church. And um, anyway, my son 
begins to tell, you know, and I get them to even look, the, uh, one of the elders, the head of security came out and they were looking at the vehicle or whatnot. He goes, my gosh, this is a new part. And I'm like, oh really? You know? Um, and he said, yeah, it's not refurbished. I mean, it's a brand spanking new part. There's no dust on it or nothing. I mean, this is a brand new part for this vehicle, the right year model and everything. It's just brand new. It's just brand new. And I'm like, okay. It doesn't mean a lot to me because I'm a woman. Okay. I'm just like, well, whatever, whatever. You know, he just kept saying, this man, he kept saying, well, it, what? it's not refurbished. I mean, it's just a brand new part. Um, I'm like, okay, fine. We go in um, and we come out and and that was that kind of an incident. Now, I could have submitted to, when he got mad and angry, I could have just said, well, fine, none of us will go to church then because you're the husband. I'm supposed to submit to you. And I can't go to church. I can't worship. I can't serve the Lord. I can't anything. Okay? Leadership doesn't get angry one minute and decide, you know, not angry and says, this is what our vision is for the family. And then the next second, get mad and tell you, you can't do a thing because they're angry and start um, putting restrictions on you due to ungodly behavior. That's ungodly things you don't submit to. Okay. You don't submit when someone says that you can't worship, you can't love Jesus, you can't uh, go to church or something like that. Um, the Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, if you read that, it does talk about women submitting. But it also says a man should love his wife like Christ did. He was willing Christ died for the church. Come on. Died for the church. Um, and so what was this? Obviously, the next time we went to church, he went to church with us. But that was Jezebelic behavior. Come on. That was ungodly behavior. And I can tell you this now, if you submit to ungodly authority, it muddies your stream. If you submit in ways you were never meant to submit, the enemy will wheedle his way in, cause a crack in your foundation, and literally come in for the kill. Anytime in my own life I've done that, if I have submitted to things that were out of line, that if it was ungodly leadership in any way, shape, or form, I've always paid the price for it dearly. And God would take me and let me go back and look in those situations and go, this is where you messed up. This is where you goofed up. Come on. There is a scripture that says, when the righteous give way to the wicked. He was acting wicked and evil in that moment. He was not acting righteous. When the righteous give way to the wicked, okay, it causes their stream to be muddied. Now, this is different than if, what, had he decided to pray, and you know, men do this sometimes. They pray and say, look, I really don't think this is the church for our family that we need to go to. Let's go find another church. Well, in that situation, they're not being evil and wicked. They feel like they've heard from the Lord, and they're, they're wanting to steer the family a particular direction. Well, you should submit to that, okay, and go and do that. But it's different than, uh, we... This is our church where members, but today you're not going because I'm the man and you ain't going. Ain't nobody going today. See, that's ungodly behavior. We don't submit to ungodly behavior. We don't submit to people throwing fits. We don't submit. It don't matter who they are. We don't submit to stuff like that. Okay? You can respect a person, you know, and not act in an ungodly way and be respectful to the person. I still respected him. You know, I didn't say, well, I'm going to church anyway. You know, I didn't. I certainly didn't do that. If I'd done that, he'd have slugged me or something. But I'm just saying because he was physically violent. But, you know, there's a way. For instance, um, if it's one of your parents and they call you and you can't talk, you can say, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Well, I'm your mama. You better not hang that phone up. I got to hang the phone up. Click. You don't have to give another explanation. You're not being ungodly. You're not being evil. Um, you can have boundaries in those kinds of situations. So I hope this has helped you. I'm not going to stay on here long. That was it. That's really it. If you want more um, study on that, Ephesians chapter 5. Um, and again, look at even Smith Wigglesworth, that thing he did to his wife. There's been other men who've done things like that to their wives. And yet their wives continued going to church. Because in that moment, their husband was not being godly. You know what I'm saying? They were asking them to submit to something uh that was ungodly. That'd be like if your spouse walked up to you and said, hey, I want you to have sex with another man. Well, you don't have to do that. That would be 
evil. They're asking you to submit to something demonic. We don't submit to demonic stuff. So, whether it's your pastor, whether it's your husband, if it is ungodly, we don't submit to it. Okay? So, I love you guys. I hope that helped. I hope that I expressed that in some kind of a way that was good and awesome. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these. I'm going to be doing more of these. So, uh... Tune in the next time I do one, and I'll talk with you guys later. Um, I am working on my book. I'm working on a couple of different ones of them, um, but just be prepared for that. I'll probably post it some point to where you can um, give an offering of a certain amount, and then I'll share the folder that that's um, with you where it's located or whatnot. Um, but one of them is. Well, there's going to be multiple ones on different angles from my personal testimony of abuse or supernaturally when God showed up, things like that. But I'm also going to be, uh, oh, that's cool. I'm also going to be doing, um, oh gosh, what was the exact title? Basically, I, I have to look on again now, but it was um, that time when I was engaged to the warlock. Basically, when I was engaged to the warlock. Um it, that is an interesting book that's going to be very, a very good read. So, it's also got a lot of things in there on how can you spot when someone's not of the kingdom of God. What were some telltale signs? Uh, what are, you know, what are the ways that even the elect can be deceived? Come on. Now, this is not going to be a nasty trash it book. There's not going to be names of things and individuals like some of you who might have been like standing on the sidelines or something and almost like a part of that but not a part of it there's not going to be naming of ministries there's not going to be naming of uh names of people involved in any of this other than my own name if that makes sense um and so it's going to be very tasteful but it's also it's going to have a lot of different things in there on how we can keep ourselves safe from being deceived in this hour how do you get the book uh, well i'm still working on it but when i'm done with it unless we just automatically go to publish it uh i'm trying to determine if i'm publishing it outright or if it's just going to be copyrighted and i'm going to be sending it probably what i'm going to be doing is the uh Oh, goodness, what do you call that? Uh, where you can share it. I'll give you a link to where I can share a particular... Uh, you'll have to download an app, a particular app, maybe through Dropbox or something, and I can share that folder where it's in with you for a particular donation, if that makes sense. So it'll be something along those lines. And um, But I'll let y'all know when that comes out fully. I wanted to make certain when I wrote the book, okay, that I did it not from an angry perspective. Like when I give uh, personal testimonies and things like that, I want to make certain there's a point in telling you. What's the point in me telling you I was abused? What's the point in me telling you that I used, you know, at one point I was engaged to a warlock and this is not suspicions. This is like proven stuff. Okay. And recently the individual admitted some of the things they did in writing. And I was just remember going, <laughs> I was like, well, that's interesting. You know, because I had asked the Lord for that to happen, and then bam, it happened. And I'm like, well, how interesting. So, um, you know, things happen. When you are pursuing the Lord, do not think that two things. One of two things. Don't think that you're always going to be living in turmoil. Come on, when you're pursuing God. But don't always think everything's going to be a beautiful bed of roses. Always a beautiful bed of roses with Jesus. But the devil notices when you pursue God and comes after you. So you got to know that you know you're sitting on daddy's lap. You got to know that you know you can hear Jesus's voice. Um, because even as much as I am uh, and other people that I know, we're in God's face. We're talking. We're listening. We're, we're right there with him like all the time, okay? Even then... Lo and behold, if the devil didn't try to uh, take me down, come on now. And I'm sure some of you could testify to the same kind of things that's gone on in your life. So I love you guys. Oh, we got that prophetic school coming up, our next session. Uh, this time we have another thing. It's a phase two. Not necessarily, I call it level two, but it doesn't necessarily, you can either take one or the other. It's not like you have to take the first one first to take the second one. It's just different topics. Totally different topics. The second one, um, 
especially if you're an intercessor, have visions and things like that, you're going to really understand the second one a lot um, more. The first one has to do, it's an overall more generalized basic topics, but people said they were like, oh, this is in depth. So it depends on what level you are at to how you're going to feel like, oh, this is a lot or this is not a lot. This is nothing. Um, but it, you go at your own pace. Not a lot of worksheets. It's a lot of live videos. The second one covers other different topics, not basic all over. It's more like uh, wormholes, uh, gates, portals, openings, the soul realm, the temple, navigating through visual, very visual things that you're not necessarily, even though we're going to have scripture for it, some of it is like you'll know because you've experienced it and you're like, oh! <gasps> Oh my gosh, that explains that what happened to me, and I wasn't sure if that was God or the devil. Oh, it's that kind of a thing. Okay, so you can private message me about that. <laughs> oh, I just feel like the Lord has me going into arenas and realms now that I'm just like, Lord, you're pulling on me, you're stretching me. But that's what He does. He does that to y'all. Come on, He does that to y'all. He does that to me when He when He says you have more in you than you know you do. Come on. Many of you, you're just now getting, God's putting you places to be a voice in places that five years ago, ten years ago, you'd have never done it. You'd have never been that bold to do that. Well, I decree and declare on you right now, boldness. Come on, boldness in the name of Jesus. Boldness in Jesus' name. I have a website, but you're not going to find any of this on the website. You go just check out my personal Facebook page. Um, my personal Facebook page is public. Go ahead and look it up, look it up, find out some things there, or private message me. Private message me through the messenger. That's um, how we do that. And um, like I said, my awesome group of uh, students this past time, it is for men and women. This last time, it just so happened that all we had was a large group of women. I know this time I already have several men signed up. Um, I do screen people. So, I don't want you to think, oh, gosh, it's a man. He might hit on me. No, honey, I screen them. They, they know better. Tiffany will get them. I'll get them, honey. I'll get them. They know better. I love you. I'll talk to you guys later. Leave a prayer request if you want me to bring that before the Lord. Mwah. See ya.